Breaking news coming out of CrossFit HQ today as they just announced new details for the summer CrossFit Games. Now, I'm going to pull this up here on the screen, a little bit of their announcement, but here's what they had to say. Quote, the top 20 men and 20 women worldwide will receive invites to Aromas. If an athlete declines their invite, the invite passes to the next athlete. The 10 sanctionals that were able to host in-person competitions this season will be invited to send their champions to this year's CrossFit Games. And if a sanctionals champion has already qualified through the Open, the invite passes to the next athlete. It's quite a mouthful, and we're going to break down some of the details there. Joining me is Nikki Brazier for the first take on this. Nikki, kind of dive in here a little bit on some of the details I think that people need to understand. I know we're digesting this for the first time here, but give us a little lay of the land. I mean, it looks like one of the hardest math equations I've seen since like advanced calc, basically. And CrossFit Games athletes are coming out of the woodwork, you know, texting all of us trying to figure out amongst themselves, who does that mean gets to go to the games? I think the bottom line to remember here is that, so CrossFit HQ has sent out these invitations to the athletes or re-invites, if you will, if they were already in the top 20, and they're asking for uh, an, an agreement by them, a yes or a no, by this upcoming Tuesday. But there is so much still up in the air so outside of the equations, outside of who gets to go from what event, I think it's important to remember that they might say yes now, but we're still waiting on regulations from, you know, international travel restrictions and states and, and everything. So we really don't even know, even if we can get the right. math right. We right. Really I think even know one quick go. example here is that, you know, you look at a Harriet Roberts who won Pandaland and she sure. lives in Sydney and you look at Cara Saunders who not only qualified through the top 20 but also won the ACC um, a late season event you know neither one of those athletes can actually come to the United States right now and they don't right. probably change by the time the summer comes but those are some athletes who just quite frankly with the restrictions that are in place can't make it let's also right. not forget the fact that this event now so 30 athletes right 30 men 30 women right. let's give them 40 support staff Maybe I'm being over, uh, uh, maybe I'm being conservative, maybe not. Let's give them 40 support staff. We're right around 100 individuals. Uh, current state of uh, regulations here in California, uh, where I live, wouldn't allow an event of that large to take place right now. So um, we haven't actually had an opportunity to speak with CrossFit, and they haven't divulged any of the conversations that they've had at a state level with um, either local authorities or state authorities. But right now, it, it appears that, that event couldn't actually take place. Right. So, I mean, even with phase one rollouts happening in some parts of the country this week, we are still seeing mainly groups of five or six for sure under 10. So it means that everything has to go basically perfectly. No resurgence of COVID-19, no issues uh, in the state of California to allow a grouping of that magnitude to go on, even though it's private property. And even though we don't necessarily need to rent out a stadium like we did in Madison, we're still going, have, going to have to abide by state regulations. Right now. And, and this brings up a really important point so you know just yesterday or rather yesterday afternoon uh ufc fighter tested positive for covid19 down right. in florida and that was going to be the first live sport event here in the united states to actually take off again since sporting events were closed across the country and, and for the most part across the globe now um you know that kind of exposes an interesting dynamic possibility here is that any one of these athletes is traveling from anywhere in the world or in the united states could technically be a carrier of the virus and bring it to the ranch in aromas um and this kind of exposes the reality of that 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 situation is very fluid and very dynamic and i think it's a little bit of a cause for concern um and and definitely is a, is a reality yeah, you know, I, I had a chance to speak with Pat Bellner earlier today, who had just gotten the news himself and asked him that very question. I was like, you know, considering the fact that there's so much up in the air right now, are you just sort of like baseline scared of being sick? I mean, take a look at what he said. We're obviously, like just finding this out this information as, as we are. So it's basically brand new. We don't know exactly how it's going to shake out yet. But given the fact that we have some concrete info for the very first time about who may be traveling to Aromas for the games, I mean, what's your initial reaction given everything's been changed? Uh, yeah, I think it's kind of unsurprising in some ways. I think that we, we expected a little bit of that after, you know, dropping the age group divisions. I think it, it sort of, made sense that the next thing to go would likely be the teams if there was still concerns about how big the event could be. Um, and they, you know, it's, it's still not final. So there might still be small changes that happen as we get closer to the event. 
There's a lot still up in the air in terms of, you know, regulations in California and travel restrictions, you know, how many people can, can actually get there, how many people can be on site altogether, you know, given the fact that all of that sort of matters in terms of COVID-19 preparation and safetyness, do you have any reservations about traveling as an athlete, being around other athletes, all that stuff? I mean, I'm hopeful that things are going to develop in a way that we don't have to worry as much when the time comes. But, you know, they're they're clearly aware of it. And I mean, we got another email about um, basically our re-invite to the games mm -hmm. and you can confirm or or deny you're going to be there. And, and they mentioned all the travel restrictions and how there are a lot of people who may or may not be able to travel. And I mean, as of today, like right now, it's basically everyone that it affects because even traveling between states or within your own country is challenging, um, let alone crossing international borders. So right. like as the neighbor to the north in Canada, like I couldn't go to the states right now based on government regulations or health organization regulations. And so, yeah, no, the hope right now is that if we can continue on the course and everybody can be responsible, then maybe we can have something fun. Basically, everything has to go perfectly from here on out in order for things to work out for these athletes in one way, shape or form. Right now, it's okay. Look, you know, and I don't want to be the doomsday scenario kind of kind of person here, but we're like trying to look at the whole picture and kind of and see like, all right, what what do you think would happen if an athlete did come to the ranch who was a carrier did test positive for it, um, and you know, what if that situation were to happen? What do you, what's the what's the fallout from something like that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I even put myself in those shoes, right? Because as a media person, I hope to be there. I hope for the chance to, you know, get to cover the games in one way, shape or form. And what would happen if someone was there who could potentially get me sick? I don't know. I don't think it would bode well for us <laughs> in one way, shape or form as a, as a sport in general. But I do think that it might be the type of risk that we all need to be willing to take in order to make this season basically continue. And, and next season too, for that matter, because this isn't going away anytime soon. No, no, it's not. And when you, it's good. Glad that you mentioned that because we we got you know some news here that um, that Dubai CrossFit Championship is is canceling their event. Um, that isn't happening till next December. And so that really brings into question, you know, looking at this situation and saying, is this the most prudent measure to be moving forward with a global sport that's going to be bringing individuals from across the United, not not just across the United States, but but from overseas here that could be potential carriers or they're going through areas where they could potentially get exposed to this virus um, as there's no vaccine and there are no real relying, uh, 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 reliant antibody tests at this stage. And, you know, we would obviously want to hear from CrossFit. I'm sure the, the, the athletes themselves would want to hear from CrossFit about their safety protocols. I'm, I mean, I'm sure that they're considering all of those factors. We don't I'm have sure. any details on that yet. Um, but it is, I think, a cause for concern. I think it's a valid cause for concern. I agree. But look, the bottom line for me is that there is still so much unknown and still a decent amount of time between now right. and the games. So for me, the fact that we're continuing to move forward with this plan that we know could change, continuing to say that there will be some kind of event, barring the fact that athletes may or may not be able to come, and this is how we're going to structure it, assuming that it's going to go on, is fine with me. And for the athletes that I've spoken to, there's no real drop dead date they're all training as though they're still going to go to the game so pending you know travel restrictions they'll be ready to go at the drop of a hat and you well, know so will i well unknown and unknowable certainly this is taking it a little bit to the nth degree but um that's part of the ethos of crossfit and and something we embrace on a regular basis certainly the competitors are very familiar with that as they typically you know may not find out what the event is a couple of uh, hours or minutes before they're about to do it or maybe they right. in the case of chaos at the 2018 crossfit games they didn't really even know what right. they were doing yet, um, which is certainly a cool aspect of the sport. Um, earlier, actually yesterday, we recorded a segment uh, analyzing a little bit of things, and uh, just due to the breaking news nature, most of that stuff is out of date. But there's a key component, a key back and forth that we had when we talked a little bit about the age group qualifier being or sorry the age group divisions being canceled and some of the numbers that we dived into about age group participation i'm going to go ahead and roll that up and we will see you again next week for another episode of the bottom line 
we've got a lot going on here with the CrossFit Games environment. And one thing that we just found out about very recently was that age groups are going to be exempt from this year's games. So their season essentially has been canceled. And now, um, you know, they can, they can go ahead and prepare for 2021 CrossFit Games season. But that is officially ended. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there have been some ad hoc groups that have sort of brought ideas to the table. And one of those you were on a call with very specifically, I think they're calling themselves the pit games and it's going to be at a ranch in uh, Minnesota and it's being led uh, by a teen athlete himself. Give us your take on kind of the scenario in, in the conference call that happened oh, last weekend. Yeah, this was really interesting. It was a Zoom call with a lot of teen athletes and their parents, which I thought was adorable. Um, and they're basically talking about opening up these invitations to some of the fittest teens on the planet and inviting them to this ranch. The Pit Fitness facility has many, many acres. They're saying they could basically put on an event similar to what Dave Castro is telling us could be happening in Aroma but with the teenagers. And what was really interesting was, to me, it was fascinating that they wanted it to be as much of a legit test of fitness as possible for the teenagers. They just, they really think that they've earned this opportunity and they want the chance to show off their fitness, but they don't want it to be sort of like second rate. They really want it to be you know, set the bar as high as the CrossFit Games has for them in the past. So they were asking all sorts of questions on this call, like, well, how are we going to get legit L1 judges in there? How are we going to make sure we have the infrastructure for all the volunteers we need? You know, they understand how hard it is to put on a production like the CrossFit Games, and they're trying to dot their I's and cross their T's and make something that is just right. as legit. Right. Okay, so, so, What's a, what was your take on it? You, I mean, you've been around the CrossFit Games for a long time. You've been a floor announcer. You're doing sanctionals. You're, you're pretty much you're in the know here. So what's, what's the bottom line? You think it's going to happen? I just think it's going to be really tough. I think they have a lot of heart, and I like that a lot. And I like that the parents are stepping in and offering to help. A lot of them have run big events in the past, so I will say they have that going for them in terms of their experience. But none of them have taken on anything like the Games. And from being a part of it on the back end, I can tell you that it is – 10 times more monumental to plan and execute <laughs> right. than you can imagine. So yeah, like, it, it makes me nervous. It makes me nervous thinking it's going to be anything other than well, kind of like a, a large comp with a, with a bunch of really fit teens. You know? Well, we're going to wait and see. There's a lot that they've got to decide and develop over the course of the next few weeks in order yeah. to figure out if they can put, pull this off and obviously where where the where the coronavirus is in in minnesota and the surrounding areas is going to have a it's going to be a big factor to whether they can put it forward yeah uh, uh, another subsection of this whole conversation of age groups kind of came up very recently with a story that tommy marquez uh published which was an analysis and a look back at um, actually the age group participation as a percentage of the entire open. Now this, this was mind blowing and we didn't know this until uh, a couple of days ago when we first pulled the numbers, but the, the amount of age group athletes participating as a percentage of the whole is increased year over year from 2018 to 2020, the most recent open. And now they are effectively making up half of the total pop population competing. In fact, it's 49.8% to 50.2% that are competing wow. as individuals. The most interesting part about that is the fact that they are, in a sense, significantly more underrepresented at the CrossFit Games from a media totally. and from a resource standpoint, yet they represent half of the competitive open population. Totally. It sounds to me like a population we don't want to alienate because we <laughs> need them to keep us alive, keep the sport alive in the community and also in the professional elite sense as well. Well, look at it this way, right? So, you know, the individual category is 18 to 18 to 34. And, right. and the master's athletes start at 35 and they go all the way up to 65 plus. In your target demographic, which which group has more disposable income? Right. Right. Yeah. At, the, at the end of the day, you know, the individuals who are probably buying uh, a lot of these products and, uh, you know, the $150 shoes and the, and the this and the that who are actually fueling the economy that's a sep that's, that exists around this, this sport, it's probably coming from the individuals with the higher paychecks. And oh, typically, sure. you know, you make a little bit more um, as you get older. Kind of seems a little bit interesting to me.
It would be cool to see a cultural shift in CrossFit and in the games landscape overall to take more of an interest in this demographic and like actually like get more sponsored athletes who are in the master's category, get more hype about it in general, obviously get more media coverage. I mean, that is something that would help perpetuate their image and their successes over the airwaves like crazy. But I mean, we're all going to have to pitch in. We're all going to have to take active interest in order to make that happen. Well, certainly the um, the success stories that are happening inside of the uh, master's category specifically are are equally inspiring and maybe even and sometimes more inspiring. The bottom line and my key takeaway from this whole thing is, is that 50% of the athletes are in age group divisions. 50% of the coverage is certainly not. Uh, and they're paying for about half. They're, 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 they are contributing half of the pool of the money that goes on to the CrossFit Games in the summertime. So 